Today I'm going to show you how to repair an old Intel Dell. And what it has is bad capacitors. Now, you've probably heard in the news recently there's been really a rash of bad capacitor problems. And while the machine is old, I mean, it's, it's probably a decade old, it's still a perfectly fine web browser unit or uh, certainly a word processing unit or even a really low-end uh, gaming unit. It's got a little extra RAM that I didn't have to pay for. When it came time to diagnose the problems with this computer, um, one of my first thoughts would have been you know, some arcing because of uh, the funk, the dust that's in here. And that's pretty common. You want, you want to suck that out. But it was really easy for me to diagnose the fact that this thing has a bad capacitor. I don't know if you can see that, but somebody's actually taken the time to write bad right on that particular capacitor. And it's a... Uh, uh, T0124. Looks like a nice high temperature capacitor. I'm not sure why precisely it failed, but, but clearly it has failed. Otherwise, it wouldn't be written on there bad. So the first thing to do will be to desolder it. And I'm going to go ahead and try to do it without even taking the board out. Because, I mean, really, why go through the extra effort? Today, to desolder this, I am going to go ahead and work on my MTD uh, lawnmower workstation. Now, I'm not saying that you have to desolder and repair electronics on top of your lawnmower, but it's one of those things that if you want to be taken seriously in the environment that you're hoping to make a name for yourself, you really have to look the part. And so, uh, while, yes, most professional uh, electronic tinkerers do work on you know the high-end machines, the Aries, the John Deere's and whatnot, um, I'm just getting into it. So I'm going to go ahead and use my my old MTD here, and uh, we'll see how it goes. Hopefully, using the wrong lawnmower as a table will not affect the end result of what I'm trying to achieve. If you're going to do professional work, uh, this is one area you probably shouldn't skimp on your tools. Now, I have a, a very nice soldering station. It's an Auto Temp 379. And I got this from Deal Extreme. Now, Deal Extreme, if you're looking for electronic components, is a great source, provided you've got the time. I, I think Deal Extreme actually hires orphans to swim your order across the ocean. And, uh, you know, it can take some time. Yes. Thank you, Kat. It can take some time to get to you. But the prices, you know, you can't be beat, really. I mean, it's probably best if you feed the orphan when you've dropped your package off, but uh, yeah, I'm not sure it's required. Most important feature you're going to look for when we're doing electronic work like this is an iron that gets pretty darn hot because some of your hobby irons just aren't going to cut it. They aren't going to get to the high temperatures that the industrial uh, soldering process uses. So you're going to want to make sure you've got some nice high temperature irons. Um, if you don't have a high temperature iron, you could always, uh, you, you could try setting the whole unit on fire, but that might desolder some of the other joints, so be careful. The other tools you're going to need to make this repair are a decent pair of pliers. So here I've got my side cutters, really nice pair. They came from all electronics, uh, uh, particularly like the wire stripping feature at the back, though when you're using them, it is a hell of a way to pinch your hands. You're going to need your uh, professional solder cleaning tool or, or your Brillo pad. You're going to need a little bit of some nice high quality flux core. And then in order to desolder the actual joints, there's two ways to go about it. You can use one of these tools, which is called a solder sucker. It is a plunger. You push down, you heat the solder up, push the lever, and it sucks the solder out. Or you can use desoldering wick, which is a braided wire that attracts the solder as you heat it. Now I'm going to use the solder sucker because um, I like the name and it makes me giggle. So now, with the solder sucker hmm, depressed, begin warming the solder joint itself. This might take some time. Okay, this might take quite a bit of time. Come on, you bastard. Okay, after an exhaustive uh, minute 
pin trial to get this thing off. It, it clearly has it's become uh, impossible. So I'm going to show you a trick. Now it's kind of a trick that you learn later on when you're when you're getting into this electronic hobby thing. And so if I, um, you know, don't tell anybody that I told you. It's kind of like a magician giving up. But if you take your capacitor, right, and you tip it up slightly like this, and then you take your finger, that son of a bitch will come right off. See that? When it comes down to actually finding your replacement capacitor, there's a lot of different sources that you can get uh, very inexpensively. Look at this slightly ominous. Uh, bucket of random electronic components that uh, I have here. But rather than digging through any of those or even taking part in a computer, I have found a source for universal capacitors. You can see it's written right on there. Yeah, it's like by a small child. But yeah, don't let that fool you, right? And what's nice is it actually comes with this big wad of additional wiring which allows me to relocate my capacitor or any other place within my unit in order to help keep things um, attractive inside. So I'm going to forego uh, replacing it with this and for stuff right here. And I'm going to go ahead and use my uh, universal capacitor. Okay, so now I'm ready to go ahead and solder this. Now, the astute among you might have noticed that I've actually taken my particular universal capacitor and uh, put it on the far side of the lawnmower away from me. Now, when you're using this particular type of electronic capacitor, especially when you're applying uh, an electron form of heat to the end of the wires of this type of capacitor, it's usually best to go ahead and put um, some large lawn cutting device between you and it. You know. Try not to breathe the smoke that comes off from this process because it'll make your babies dumb. And there you can see our, our super professional... Oh, you son of a bitch. And there you have our, our super professional looking, uh, very durable soldering pair of which there were no problems uh, connecting it up despite what you might have heard. But there it is right there. Now it's just a matter of putting the memory back in and finding a place to tuck our beautiful universal capacitor. And there we have it all back together. Now I've decided to stick my universal capacitor right down there between the ramp because um, I think that it'll gather additional electronic frequencies as the memory transfers and hopefully speed things up. You might notice that I have copied the Fibacci Mennonitis uh, circle system here. And that's kind of important when wiring in one's universal uh, capacitors because electronic frequencies as they pass through generate static charges and this helps uh, dampen that effect. It'll make your computer faster. When you're doing it, however, do not put a loop in the yellow wire. You put a loop in the yellow wire and this whole thing could explode. Only the orange wire gets a loop. Remember, orange is fine, yellow is dying. That's what they taught me in school. Alright, so we've taken the time, done our repair properly. Now, right now I have it plugged into this power strip you can see right here. And the computer itself isn't turned on because the power strip is turned off. With a repair like this, especially since you don't know precisely at what point that capacitor is in the chain, it's always best for the first time to turn it on with a safety stick. Now, a safety stick can be purchased online, but it's easy enough to make one. First, you just go out and you find a stick, and then you use it. Safety stick. Are we ready? I am now going to prod on the power strip. Sort of. Oh dear. I do believe there was a problem. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There's the problem. See? Yeah. See how dirty it is? I'm pretty sure that was the problem. Oh. Hmm. It appears that our universal safety capacitor possibly failed 
maybe even causing this particular calamity. Now, it might have been that I had that yellow wire twisted. Uh, to be honest, I, I, I won't probably know until I do a little more biopsy. Okay, yes. Clearly, this was a memory failure. You can see the failure part right along here. And uh, you know that it's broken because it's in a couple of pieces. Now, this is the point of memory failure right down there uh, that I would describe as the crater, okay? And over here, you notice that the heat sink has taken a little bit of damage. It's probably still usable, but it's taken a little bit of damage. You might also notice how the processor is missing a big chunk out of the corner. That might be a little harder to fix. Most of the wires uh, appear to have some, some minor shrapnel damage, but a little bit of duct tape and some patience. Uh, I should be able to repair that. See? See, that's how they failed. It's just another example of using cheap components to try to do a man's job.